uh, before we, we, uh, you came in here, Mitch's brother, whose name's escaping me right now, he's with us on the bus. He uh, showed me a clip. Was it 2016? 2017. And you went off a jump and you landed like at the, at the, like before the landing of another jump and obviously just filleted your arm, had multiple yep. surgeries. Yep. What was like, just to talk me through how, what, one, why that happened. Well, we'll get to the rest later, but why, right. like, why did that happen in your expert opinion of how you ended up in that situation? Yeah. So, um, there's a lot of different things to look at during that time, which we've in the, you know, we've, we've had that happen more often, but that was, it was a very wet time in California. We just mm -hmm. gotten a lot of rain. And, uh, like I said, with conditions changing all the time, well, the transitions between all the jumps before we take off, they're, they're really soft and soggy and just also inconsistent. Right. Um, and then once we started racing, I did basically everything perfectly, but my suspension completely compressed on the bottom of the jump. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just G'd out. And by G'd out, I mean, when we keep hitting it over and over, the hole gets kind of deeper, 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 deeper. And yeah. uh, my my suspension essentially bottomed out and rebounded. It and just... Uh, it, it, it pulled your nose forward. Exactly. And not just that, I think I drug my heels and it ripped my feet off. So as soon as I started going forward, basically doing a Superman, I mean, I have no control at that point right. anymore, right? Um, I tried to hang on as long as I can to just at least somewhat just straighten my body out a little bit. But I mean, I absolutely faced into the uh brother it was a tough thing to watch yeah i mean like you went through it but. i mean right now like i can watch it over and over i've never really had a problem watching it yeah even um, right after it happened like you're in the hospital um I, I don't really remember honestly the time after was super fuzzy for me because i was in the hospital for almost four weeks and uh, i was on a lot of medication yeah. and it scared me a little bit all the medication stuff but they're telling me that i'm nowhere near what people normally take mm -hmm. so um but Anyway, you know, between long-lasting morphine and, and oxy or what Dilaudid, whatever they give you, you know what I mean? Is I, I literally, I don't really remember that much shortly after. There's there's little highlights here and there, but I was in Vail, Colorado in the Stedman Clinic, which thank God because Dr. Viola, you know, my arm was post. I mean, yeah. absolutely. I uh, dislocated and uh, compound fractured my radial head on my elbow right here. And then my wrist. For those of you listening, compound fracture means bone out of the skin. Bone out of the skin. My wrist as well. My radius right here. My ulna was compounded. Uh, ulna is a little ball. Right yep. Here. Yep. Correct. Right here. And I actually have quite a bit of nerve damage, which it doesn't bother. It's just numb skin. You know, yeah. it doesn't feel that comfortable. But um, dislocated. Is that, is that wrist. from? Uh, that's from the bone coming out, right? It, it tears. Yeah. It tears nerve endings as it yep. comes out of the skin. Exactly. And sometimes it's not like I can do everything. My 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 movement is good, but it's just the skin that's that's a little irritated. I guess. Mm -hmm. which that's that's child's play I, that doesn't really yeah. bother me but um i think the biggest thing was is the compartment syndrome right after from the impact so my arm started swelling up and what is, yeah what is compartment so com yeah, what compartment does that syndrome is from a really heavy impact or trauma and then your muscles start swelling and basically cuts off the blood supply and when that happens and your muscle starts dying and once your muscle's dead you you can't you amputate your arms so i was like right on that edge where that could have happened. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting surgery and um, because my wrist, everything was sandpaper. Like it was just shattered and into a million pieces. Like and dust. But when you're, when you're talking about essentially your body making its own little tourniquet to cut off the blood, blood supply. Pretty much, exactly. How does that decision be made? For like, the, like the surgery, amputation, because like, you're obviously, I'm assuming you got concussed in that thing too. Like no, you, actually, you, my, my head was fully You were fully clear. conscious? Never out, never nothing. Had and to be honestly, in shock. You know what the crazy part is? That besides this and down i had zero pain no nothing no way i wasn't even sore i mean granted maybe i don't know if i was sore because that was taken off all my attention mm -hmm. but it was literally elbowed down to my finger or to my wrist other than that i was completely fine nothing and which is really? crazy because that impact you know it could i mean it could have been shoulder my chest my sternum just because i absolutely it's like facing a wall right um and, you know, not all crashes are always, and injuries are always that bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've broken my, both of my wrists before and gotten surgery on it, but not to this extent, you know, like you're out for, for a couple months or whatever. Um, and that, that's still heavy, but this was a whole not this was a career ending injury really. Yeah. And that was, so when I was in the hospital, surgery was done that I completely kind of like dislodged myself from the sport a little bit because it was so far away. If I was ever going to able, be able to ride or race again, it was so far away. And I just. I kind of just started, even though I was in a hospital, I just started enjoying that being there comfortable and like, am I going to be able to race? I don't know. So I might as well like 
I started I started unfollowing everybody from the sport. Just like yeah, it's a sport that I loved, and I kind of like I was a little mad, and like there were so many unknown questions. I'm just like, man, I need to like I need to get away a little yeah. bit. You know, my parents came over, and um, my parents have been separated for a long time, but it was the first time in a long time that like we all felt like a family again. You know, mm -hmm. they came over, and oh, they were in Germany, so my entire family is in Germany. So when that happened, my wife, of course, was uh, constantly in contact with them, but it was just a really heavy time of a lot of. Um, information and I hired my own therapist over two years. I did my own therapy. Like I was constantly, once I was able to, I was constantly moving my skin to just get sensation and just started moving yeah, stuff that around. Yeah. Trying to figure out like, like I your just, brain has waves that basically tell your arms and legs where yes. to go. And if by touching it and feeling it, maybe even putting tape on it sometimes, all the time, it'll allow that proprioception to come back. I actually, um, I laid in the grass for a little bit and started listening to uh, David Goggins. Um, that's kind of like when I found out about David Goggins. Oh, yeah, dude. I you know, I think listening. he lives in Brentwood. He lives like right up the road. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, I didn't know I that. I heard. I don't know. Don't fact check me on that. Anyway, well, I started listening to his podcast back then. And that's when he was kind of just starting to like become noticed. And I'm like, mm. oh, I'm going to listen to this guy. And, um, I, he's kind of like the one that made me, I, I flipped the switch, like where I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking doing this. And, yeah. uh, I just started hammering away. Um, basically didn't give myself any room for air. Um, I told myself I was going to come back and, and be the best writer in the world. And, um, just every single day, just grinded towards it. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, I was at super early actually. I wish I would have waited with that a little bit. I started working out again and like, I had a stairmaster in my house with my arm up in the air, and I was just walking for hours on the stairmaster. And I'm like, why did I even do that? Because I was a year out from racing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But at the same time, I had to keep myself busy a little bit. I wish I would have taken that time to like maybe not work out and kind of like actually take it as like, hey, maybe let's rest a little bit, you know, and yeah. let this thing do its thing. But um, yeah, I just I started working full speed ahead, and I think uh, it came with some other problems too. You know, I, I, I'm not the best writer in the world, but. I feel like the reason I am back at the top level is because I charged after my dream pretty much full speed, mm -hmm. hiring my own physical therapist. And and um, even at night, I was just constantly moving it. The You know, elbow is a pain in the ass to get range of motion back. Like I, my elbow, I still can't lock it out and my yeah. wrists are super stiff. But um, you, can't, you can't get full extension. Yeah, it's I mean, it's good now because I have just it healed over years. Like, yeah. I kid you not, three years later, I. I and how many surgeries? Mm, I think on my left arm was 11 or 12. Um, there were eight in the first three weeks. I mean, it was just constant. And um, yeah, it, I backed it up a year later with destroying my right hand. And that was almost a career-ending injury too. So there were just a couple of years of yeah. like shit going on. You know what I mean? And um, then it's been a really tough road ever since. But uh, I'm in a good spot now. And I'm um, starting to get older too. But I'm, I'm having more fun now uh, than I, I've had in a long, long time. And that's ultimately what it's all about. Right. When you When you say at the end of that sentence, I'm getting a little older too. Is there a, is there a piece of you? Cause anybody who's able to play a professional sport, whatever category it is, the end always comes for them. Have you ever put that in your mind? Cause at one point in our lives, all you thought about was I'm going to do this forever. All I thought about was well, I'm going to do football forever, but at some point it comes to get us all like, like father time comes and gets us. What are, you know, from a transition standpoint, not saying it's going to happen anytime soon, but have you put any thought into that? 